We are here at AirVenture. We've been through a busy, busy week, and one airplane in particular has really attracted a lot of attention. That's the new MVP from MVP Aero. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking here with Daryl Lynn, kind of one of the main dogs behind this thing. Uh, you have had a lot of people around it, and they've really enjoyed looking at your seaplane, and it's this lovely construction here. But you've got some ideas about how to present the airplane so that people really grasp it, because there's a lot to take in here on this MVP. So, Let's imagine a situation, Daryl, for me. I'm going to paint a picture for you and you tell me how it works out. We come in, we land on the water, we touch down, we get near the beach or something like that. And in a lot of seaplanes, there's some great ones out there, but when you do all that, then you've arrived in your seaplane and, uh, well, then you have to get out of the seaplane to go have some fun. Tell me how that's different in the MVP. Okay, <clears throat> that's that's really the, uh, the defining feature of the aircraft is that when it arrives at its destination, many aircraft are hangered or they, they stay behind. They're not a part of the mission for the weekend. And MVP continues on. It participates every moment of the entire weekend with the owners of the aircraft supporting their lifestyle. And so uh, what we worked on was those, what do we need to do to a seaplane to make that happen? Well, the, uh, the first thing is this, is that on arrival, so on arrival, uh, we do what's called a forward canopy retraction. Kind of scissors up into the sky there, doesn't it's it? A four bar. And that's with just, uh, I'm going to move over here in the camera, but that's just a mechanical thing. You're, you're not using a power boost to do that. You right. Just that it's, it's, it's just like the tailgate of your SUV, it's gas powered assistant. Ah, okay. So very straightforward. So you get a little mechanical help, but not a powered mechanical help. Right. Its, it's job is just to make the canopy almost weightless when you're retracting it. And then when the handle gets up there, it's, it's kind of cool. It's actually, it becomes rigid, and it's a device for it to help you stand up. Oh, you up. can use that to get in and out of the aircraft. Right. Okay. We think this will probably be one of the easiest LSAs to get in and out of, because look what you've got. You literally step into the aircraft and just sit down. Excellent. And you got a lot of places you can stand on this airplane, but I'm guessing there's more to that story. There is. Okay, so the... Uh, so now we're, we're at our destination. Uh, we basically you get the windshield out of the way. Which, what do you need to do? First thing is going to be beaching or docking. Well, now you can get up. Well, let me interrupt you for a second then. When that's up, can I still do stuff with the engine? Good question. <laughs> exactly right. You'll see that the engine is actually about a foot aft of the canopy. So we still have engine power. You'll, you'll get into, let's say we're going into a marina. Let's take that as an example. You're going into the marina, uh, use main engine power out in the lake, get into the, the behind the breakwater, okay, and now you, you retract your canopy and you've got the ability to, we have electric thrusters planned here so that you can now fold your wings on wide to stand up, get onto the catwalk here, and as you see, the catwalk goes all the way to the aft end of the airplane. Practically to the tail. Almost to the tail. But if I get back there, am I not going to be tipping the airplane? Stability is a big factor with this airplane. As you can see, our sponsons are more aft and they're bigger. Yeah, they are. They're well aft. Most of the other constructions like this that we've seen are just more up here. Right. What we're after is lateral stability, and in fact, our studies show that we can have two, both pilot and passenger on the same side, on the same side? of the airplane. And you still have within a five, five, four or five degree uh, list in the airplane, which is very acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Let's change the mission a little bit. Let's say we're uh, we're going, uh, we're in the middle of the lake. We've landed, this is up. We want to get some food. The first thing we're going to say is retract your panel. Uh, and why do you want to do that? Well, you want to keep it away from the water activities. Because of all the electronics. Yep, all, okay. the, all the electronics are up, uh, up and above. The wiring harness is inside. You're going to get arm. kind of splashing. I mean, it happens in the water, and it can be unexpected. It could be a very nice day. Suddenly, you have a thunderstorm, a or boat, a boat goes by. Boat goes by, and so you want to advance the plan. So you're getting the expensive bits up and out of the way. And I see the front of it here is all. Uh, this is. Uh, I know this is a mock-up for you, but is it going to be this way in the future too, with the finished version? Yes. This is. You're all kind of sealed in up there. Exactly. This is actually uh, water resistant. The entire instrument panel is inside the uh, pod. Uh, and what's interesting is that in this configuration, the airplane is still operational. You can see the panel from the seat. Your throttle is still functional. You can still start your engine. So now you can do slow taxi in this configuration. Again, with the wings out now, but you can bring all this up and you can still manipulate everything you want to do. Exactly. Well, so while, uh, while we've been looking at this, this airplane has been kind of transforming behind us here. We, so. we did a couple of things. What we did is we deployed what we call the origami deck. And that's this uh, level right here. To do that, we took the seat forward, 
Yeah, you have the choice of putting it on a pedestal, so this could be for fishing. This is one of the seats out of the airplane. Yep, yeah. this is the passenger seat. This could be for uh, this could be for fishing. It could be for photography, some kind of uh, research. It's just a very comfortable place to work in whatever environment you chose to fly. And it's in. all stable up here and everything. Right, so exactly. you're not tipping over. That's right. Losing expensive equipment if you brought some out to do some work or something. Exactly. So the so that gives you quite a, a surface area to work with, uh, but it continues. This yoke also removes. <laughs> We have another panel that folds down. We don't have it right here at the, at the moment. Okay, so you can create a whole deck up here then. It creates a whole deck. And so the bottom line of, the, uh, of that is this. It gives you a very large work area. You've got your catwalk, a complete deck for whatever mission you can imagine. And we're getting a lot of ideas from customers here. It's pretty cool. Photography. Uh, in the, uh, the different things that they do. Uh, okay, so here we are. Um, I'm gonna put this back up. We've deployed our second deck. We've got our fish for the day. We've had dinner. Uh, where are we going to stay? So Good that's point. you're out in the middle of nowhere, right? We're so out in the, the middle of the lake, and we beached it. And so uh, the sun sun's starting to set. We've had our dinner, and what we've done is we come up with an accessory, which is a tent <laughs> for the uh, for the aircraft. So that's going to kind of cover the whole front of the aircraft and, a, and have some sort of attachment, is it? So you've got yes. a closed environment in there, then. right? And the, the tent is huge. Okay, the you have yeah, this is pretty wide across here, so you're not in a little tiny pup tent. No, it's eight and a half feet wide, <laughs> it's nine feet long, and the tent uses the structure of the aircraft, the actual hull. It's almost like uh, putting a bed sheet on it, and, and so it uses that as the structure to keep the, the, the weight of the tent very uh, low. Uh, a couple things then. Uh, just talking about uh, baggage, taking things from A to B, here's a really unusual application. <clears throat> Look at it in this application. Let's say we did not take the seat with us. Okay. Nor, nor the pedestal. Didn't even have it with you. Okay. Leave it on the hangar floor. You don't need the weight. Okay. Now you've got a situation where you've got one of your decks down. We're going to go flying. Forget the seats there. Right. right. Okay. Look at the storage area that you've got. This whole that, that whole deck is basically double decker. You've got that deck above and the deck below and a deck below and then you've got the baggage compartments on both sides. We really worked on water resistance and okay in the worst case scenario what happens all right so let's say you're doing just the water gets in here so let's say you're you are uh, let's say you're in this configuration the instrument panel is up but in this configuration there is nothing below this line that can be damaged by water. Fresh water. Fill horse. this thing up with water. You're not doing any harm to the airplane. This 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 aircraft. Here's where we're going with this. Our design objective is this aircraft could be swamped. You could be up to your chest in water, and you're still floating. Not only that, you still have a functional airplane. The panel is operational. You can still start your engine. You've got a throttle. Run your bilge pump and wait. That's your strategy. Pump the water back out. Pump the water back. Uh, every single thing has to have more than one function, okay, to, to be able to pull off what we're doing here. And uh, I have to say that about our design team led by Mike Van Stagen. Uh, that man is very creative, extremely hard worker, and uh, he has this ability to take, he, he said it to me this way, as an aircraft is a thousand compromises, and you're, and you're taking this in a design cycle down to a finished airplane, and that's what this is. He was uh, one of the engineers, the design engineers on the SR-20 series. He was the lead engineer, uh, design engineer on the S uh, Cirrus jet. So he knows what needs to be done for production. Yeah, that's which, a big distinction. There's been some wonderful aircraft created throughout aviation history, and a lot of them you really can't build very well because their design was so intensive that there was no way to actually construct them in volume. So exactly. Between Mike and Robert Vest, who's our aerodynamicist, they found the compromises to say, how do we produce this wing in volume? How do we keep it light? And they've come up with just a magnificent solution in, their, uh, in the internal structure Absolutely. of the airplane. And that kind of thinking is happening all over this airplane. And so uh, that's why we're able to do the things we do. You're, you flooded us with a lot of great information here. That's wonderful. No matter how much you give us on this video, and there's been a bunch of it, people still have other questions and so on. Where do we go to find you on the web, Mike? Uh, oh, yep, <laughs> it's Carol. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. We all get my name's all mixed up here at the end of the show. Yeah, uh, it's mvp.arrow, which is mvp.aero. There's no .com. Just type that in mvp.arrow, and you'll come to our website. It's also the name of the company, right? Yeah, this it is all right in your hat. It does. It, it is right there. Yeah. All right, great. We've been talking with Daryl Lynn today. I'm Dan Johnson. We're here at AirVenture, and we're getting close to the end of the week. I'm surprised you still got a voice left. 
but uh, we've got lots more information about the MVP to follow on my website and lots of other aircraft you can find at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Daryl and myself here at AirVenture. Well, you said you could sleep up front. You didn't say anything about sleeping in the back, so what's going on here? Okay, well, this is a Mike Van Stagenism, we call it, is, uh, is that he, uh, you know, he thinks that there needs to be something to do for everyone on the airplane. So uh, we have a garage station that uh, our engineer is the first in the world to ever make an aircraft longer to have a hammock. <laughs> Just to put a hammock in. It's a nice system. It looks now you had you got a, a, an anthropomorphic dummy in there now, but you had a real person in it earlier, and I thought she was going to fall asleep on you actually. In actual fact, uh, during the press conference, it's Jenny. She's the wife of the designer of the tracking canopy. In actual fact, she did fall asleep, <laughs> but it was during Mike's presentation, so that happens a lot. <laughs> Great stuff.